And happy Sunday to everyone who's joining us. It's wonderful to have you here. And uh, we are very excited to offer our very second uh, live webinar with Dr. Zorn. And today we are going to be covering the topic of search functionality. So this webinar is going to focus on the search function features um, in Raider Opus. And uh, thank you for all of those who, who have provided feedback in the registration page. <laughs> um, for the things that you'd like to talk about. Um, I did send those over to Matt and we're going to do our best to cover as much of those as possible. Um, so stay tuned for that. And also, you know, it's it's Matt's request that we're have this webinar be as interactive as, as possible. So I am going to be keeping an eye on the Q&A board. So if you do have a question at any point, please do write your question in the Q&A. I'll be keeping an eye on those. I'll be answering as many as I can myself. And then for the ones that I cannot answer to you directly, um, I'll ask Matt to address that as part of our webinar. And I would ask you that you keep your questions related to the search functionality as that is the topic of this webinar. And of course, if you have other topics that you'd like addressed, that's something that we can do in a future webinar. So without further ado, I would like to get started because I know we've got a lot to cover. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Zorn. Dr. Zorn is a naturopathic physician and homeopath. Uh, residing in the wonderful state of Oregon and a graduate of the National College of Natural Medicine. And he is a practicing naturopath and homeopath and is also a teacher at the school there in Portland, Oregon. And he's been a very instrumental part of keeping homeopathy alive in, in the naturopathic college, as well as being an instrumental figure in the homeopathy club there. So Matt, thank you for all the work that you're doing for homeopathy and thank you so much for sharing your knowledge of Raider Opus with us so that we can enhance our Raider Opus skills and homeopathic practice knowledge. And um, without further ado, I'm going to turn off my screen and my audio and, and hand everything over to you. And uh, and let, we're looking forward to another webinar with you today. Great, oh, thank you. The yeah. one thing I will just say, because um, a question did come up about this last time, is uh -huh. for those who are uh, 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 watching right now, and you're seeing perhaps in a little side box, Matt and I with our video, that is a box that you can move around. So if you're also using your program and kind of following along with Matt, and you're noticing that that box is getting in the way of what you're doing, that's no problem. You can just left click that box, hold and drag that box around. So you can move it out of your way if you need to. Um, that is something that moves around on your screen. And if it's covering something you need to, to see, you can just move it around. So Matt, off to you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, sure. Well, thank you everybody for being here. Um, so the real power of this program and uh, reviewing the questions that Dr. Miller sent to me uh, regarding what you guys wanted to cover, a lot of you hit on it. And it's really taking what the patient is saying or what you're observing, but mostly what they're saying, and turning it into the exact rubric or the exact bit of information in the repertory as though the patient wrote it themselves. Okay, so that's really what we're going to cover a lot of that. I'm going to go over a brief uh, review. Um, I got my little cheat sheet here. So to get into the search function, again, we want to go to the search function is up here where the magnifying glass is, and you have your little arrow and uh, you can find a rubric, um, but there's a much easier way to do that. Um, there's search and then advanced search. I never use this simple search function. It's just, it doesn't, it's not useful to me because I use the advanced search function even for simple searches. So I would recommend you always go to advanced search. It's going to open up. Remember, anything you click on up here, repertory, reference, if I click on references, they all come up here. Um, and then if I want to open one, Whatever I open is gonna open up on this screen here, and then you have all your tabs. All these tabs are open right now, okay? So in my search, we're gonna go over a couple things here. First thing we're gonna go over is when you put in your information, you've got um, four areas here. You can put in search word in English. You can actually change the language if you want. Uh, search words, the remedies, families, and I really don't use this very often at all. Um, and then you have your chapters, if you want to search in a particular chapter for a particular word or for a particular remedy. Okay, and I developed some um, some uh, little uh, uh, exercises that we're going to do today. So 
when you put the information that you're looking for in here, we have to command the computer to go and look for that. So I want you guys to all to remember that you have this up here. You have your, your uh, magnifying glass to launch the search, or you can pick where you want to launch the search. So every time I do a search, I always come here. You have your little triangle again. I click on that, and I can search in the current document. I can search in all documents. I'm actually going to show you an exercise where it's useful to look in all documents sometimes um, because there's a, there's a particular set of words that I'm going to put in that it's not, it's not going to show up in any repertory, but it will show up in Materia Medica. Okay. Um, if any document's open, it'll search in those open documents here. Uh, you can search in all repertories. So it's essentially the computer is going to go into every single repertory over here. And it's going to look in there for the remedy you're looking for, the word you're looking for. Okay. Um, all open repertories. So right now, let's, um, if you want to open up and see which repertories you have, I only have synthesis open, okay? But I usually have uh, synthesis and Boninghausen and uh, Boger and maybe even Fatak. So um, back here, uh, you can pick certain repertories. I don't really use this at all. I typically use all repertories or all documents. And every once in a while, if I just want to look into the Materia Medica, I'll use open references if the document I want is open or just all references, okay? So this is how you launch your search, okay? So we'll put words in, remedies in, chapters in if we need, and then we always launch the search up here. Okay, let's see. Um, there's a couple ways to use this search, okay? One of the ways to use the search, which I like to do, is when I'm studying Materia Medica, I want to know kind of what the keynotes of the remedy are, okay? And let's do this quickly, just as a little example. So type in the remedy room, R-H-E-U-M, and you'll see room palmatum is there. We click on that, and then you see here it's light blue, this circle. I want that to be dark blue, so I have to press Enter, and it opens up another little bar down here, but it turned this dark blue. Once that's dark blue, it's active. So I click on that, and I really want to see the grade three and the grade four. So there's a checkbox there in grade three, a checkbox there in grade four. <clears throat> and I want to see the rubrics that come up where room is a grade three and a grade four. I can also change the rubrics. If I check on rubrics containing, I can do less than, less than or equal to, exactly more than or more than or equal to. I typically use less than or equal to. So let's just do less than or equal to, and we'll type in the amount of, this will be the amount of remedies in the rubric. So I just add two zeros. So now what I'm doing is I'm telling the computer to look for the remedy room in a grade three or a grade four in the rubrics with less than or equal to 100 remedies. So I click on that and it applies it. Now I need to search. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna go into all repertories just to show you guys or refresh your memory <laughs> a bit here. So I clicked on all repertories. Boger has 87 entries. Uh, the synoptic key has one. Boninghausen has 35. We get down to Schroyen, which is synthesis, and we've got 33. And here are your rubrics. So this is one of the ways that I do study Materia Medica. So room, very capricious, which means they change their mind for no particular reason when he is uh, rejecting things for which he's been longing for when he's offered. Okay. Um, that uh, chamomile is going to be in there. Staphysagria is in there. Um, you have irritability during chill. Okay, remember in the repertory, there are three stages to fever. There's heat, uh, chill, and perspiration. And so this is saying during the chill of the fever, the patient becomes very irritable. It's a grade three. Irritability during dentition, it's a grade four. So when the child is teething, it's a room is a very, very strongly indicated remedy. Okay, restlessness in children in dentition, aversion to playing in children, uh, lamenting in children before stool. So this is a good way to learn Materia Medica because number one, it gives you the grade three and grade four indications for the remedy. But as you read these, it also gives you practice in the, uh, the verbiage, how the words are laid out. And that's really something that a lot of people stumble with is they don't really know how the words are laid out. And that takes a lot of time to learn that. But we're gonna, using the search function, we can actually get around that. Okay, so you can see also uh, shrieking in children during stool, um, 
weeping in children, coldness of the face during fever. So that's just one way to to study uh, Materia Medica. Is there a question? Yeah, Matt, would you be able uh, to do that same exercise that you did again, and perhaps this time maybe do it with a new remedy, so we're seeing it from a new angle, and do it step by step um, a bit more slowly, because there are some users who are following along and also want to use it in their program, and they're okay. not able to keep up. Um, so if we can do that again and just a, a, a tad bit slower. Okay, sure. All right, so I just clicked X, which took out the remedy. And let's pick, uh, let's go with Athusa, A-E-P-H. Athusa Sanapium, okay? So I'll click on that. Now I have the remedy in there, but as you can see, the circle is not uh, activated yet. I try to click over it, nothing happens. So I have to press enter. Now it's blue, and now I can go into that um, box. So I just clicked on it, and then it gives me, it gives you a picture of the remedy. Uh, it gives you the ability to search the different degrees. Um, I actually have a couple of other exercises that we're going to do um, over the next uh, hour and uh, 20 minutes. Um, so what I want to do, I want to get rid of degree one. So do you guys, hopefully you all know that homeopathic remedies, when they're put into a rubric, they're given a grade one which will just be um, regular italics in black, two, which will be blue uh, um, with, uh, excuse me, with italics, three, which will be red and bold, and then four is red, bold, and underlined. Okay. And Matt, do you know what determines how something gets placed into being a first, second, third, or fourth degree? It depends on the practitioner. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you go into uh, Boninghausen, he'll, put a lot of remedies as grade threes and grade fours because he's, it's, it's the repetitiveness of seeing that symptom, the mm -hmm. uniqueness of the symptom and um, how many times it's been cured clinically mm -hmm. or so that's really what kind of designates a remedy to being uh, a grade three or a grade four. Whereas if they're not too sure about it, maybe they've seen it once or twice or a handful of times, but it's not the leading characteristic symptom of the prescribing symptom then it'll probably get a lower grade. Um, when it comes to th that, that grading system was a lot more um, useful when you we had to thumb through a book. Now that you're able to do this analysis in a matter of seconds with the computer, um, I really don't pay too much attention to it um, in most cases because if somebody put it in there as a one, I don't want to discount it because, you know, chamomile's in there because it's a three. Right, okay. You really want to keep your, 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 your net cast wide until you really get the proper um, uh, analysis in. So we'll get rid of the one and two. Um, and let's just leave it at that. I, the, the other thing I did before was I put rubrics containing, and then there's a drop down window here or slide up window. Um, well, let's do exactly what I did before less than or equal to and a 100. Okay. So it's going to search for grade three and grade four in rubrics with less than or equal to 100 remedies. I apply that. And then I want to search. Okay, I need to give the computer the search function a command. I do my drop down window and I want to look in repertories. So it's going to search for the remedy, Athusa, in all repertories. And it looks like there's 14. So there are 14 rubrics that where Athusa is a grade. There are no grade fours because if it were a grade four, you'd see a red line underneath. So all grade threes. So um, herpes on the nose, it's a grade three. This is one of the keynotes for Athusa that um, whenever they're sick, they have a very anxious expression on the face. Indigestion from milk, that's another keynote. Uh, they don't do well with milk. Um, vomiting after milk, and especially when they drink the milk, the vomit comes up in these chunks or like curds. Uh, that's a strong, strong keynote. So if you have a child um, and they, uh, the food that they're vomiting up looks like curded, curdled milk, and they have a, uh, an expression of suffering on the face that's I've seen remedy uh, cases where they've given the remedy based on those two or three indications. Um, so that's how you do that. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more exercises where we uh, do this some more, okay? And I also wanna, let me just make sure I stay on track here. Um, there were some questions about how do you find what the patient is saying exactly and how do you find the most accurate productive search or do the most accurate and productive search? <clears throat> that's really, 
Um, let's do a couple of exercises with that. Okay? So let's say that you have a patient, you're taking their case, and, in the, and let's say that they have headaches. And in the process of taking their case, they say, it feels like the top of my head is going to fly off. That's how intense the pressure is. It just feels like the top of my head is going to fly off. Okay. Let's say you don't even know where to look. But of what they're saying, fly off. That's what you want to look for. Okay. Because it feels like the top. That's You can find it actually in Robert's uh, Materia Medica. But all I'm going to do under the words, I'm going to type in fly. And it has to be a separate word. Off. And I know that the top of the head is the vertex. So I'm just going to put in vertex. Okay. So I want to make sure, you see how you can search at least one of these words? If I press that, I click on that, now it's going to find every rubric that has the word fly, every rubric that has the word off, and every rubric that has the word vertex. I'm going to end up with a couple thousand rubrics. What I want is all of these words, it says in the same paragraph, but it also translates, when you look in the repertory, it translates into the same rubric. So I want all three of those words in the same rubric, okay? Because this is what the patient said, I feel like the top of my head's gonna fly off. So then we're gonna search in all repertories. <clears throat> it's a small rubric, there's only about three remedies in there. The computer's been running a bit slow. So head pain in the vertex, ascending aggravates as if the top of the head would fly off. They didn't say ascending. They just said that the top of the head was going to fly off. So there's bursting as if the top of the head would fly off. Click on that. And you have simicifuga and xanthoxylum. Okay. Practically, what I would do, if there were no other modalities, they just said they feel like the top of the head would fly off, I would actually use this rubric here. Head pain um, on <clears throat> the vertex as if the top of the head would fly off. That's the rubric because that's exactly what the patient said. So the gist of what I'm getting at you guys is that when you're listening to somebody and they use something that's very specific, you take that word and you do the search for that particular word. Okay. Um, don't ever use pain unless it's extremely specific because if you do a search for the word pain, you're going to end up with thousands and thousands of rubrics. Okay, so what essentially what you're looking for when you're trying to find uh, a rubric that expresses exactly what the patient says, find the most unique word in the statement that they've made. That's the best way to do that. Okay, um, let's do another one. Let's do where the patient says they have photophobia, okay, or light sensitivity, and they say, so we'll go back to the search function. Remember, I just all I did was click on the tab, okay, I can jump around. I'm in, I'm in my repertory. Um, I can go back to my search function. There I am. And I want to get rid of the three words because we're done with that exercise. And the patient says, I have photophobia. Or I get really sensitive to light. And it's much worse when, the, when it's overcast. Okay. That's unique because usually people have more photophobia when the sun is out. So instead of searching under uh, looking for photophobia, or just type it in. So I'm typing in the word photophobia, and I'm going to type in uh, cloudy. Okay, so it's going to look for photophobia cloudy. That's what the patient said. That's I could put weather in too, but I'm just going to put cloudy because if cloudy is there, weather is usually going to precede it. Okay, so I want to make sure that it's going to search all words in the same paragraph. Remember, if I go here. It's going to find all the photophobia rubrics and all the cloudy rubrics, and that's not what I want. So all words in the same paragraph or the same rubric. And now I have to send the computer out to, to look for it. Then we go to repertories. Come on, you can do it. So in Schroen's, Photophobia and cloudy weather aggravates. That's exactly what the patient said. So I double click on that. And the remedy is ammoniacum. Ammoniacum gumi. It's a plant in the uh, carrot and celery family. It's uh, related to cicuta, which is interesting because there's cicuta right there. I didn't even realize that until now. And canaya, same family. Okay, so that's just, that's just another way of doing a search for exactly what the patient says. Look for the unique word in the statement. 
uh, or a set of unique words, and then that will be very helpful to you. Okay. There's another way to do a search function. We're, we're going to work through this. Okay, we're doing the words right now. We're going to do some exercises on remedies. Again, I don't use this very much at all. Um, and then we'll integrate the chapters as well. If the patient says, well, let's say this. Let's say you're dealing with a patient and um, walking seems to come up constantly, right? They, I actually am working with a patient right now that um, he says, uh, I walk constantly. I walked 403, 40, 430 miles last month. That's a lot of walking. So what I want to do, and he, he doesn't have any symptoms around it, so I'm not going to look in the head chapter where walking aggravates. Um, I'm actually going to look in, uh, well, first I want to put the word in walking. And you can do this with reading. You can do this with urinating. You can do this with stool or bowel movement. That's the that's a, something else. Um, there's certain words that uh, are synonyms. And so you might think of bleeding. And if you look at bleeding, you're going to find very few rubrics. I think there's one in bleeding easily of the gums when um, cleaning them. But most of the time, it's going to be hemorrhage. Or there, the word heat and fever are interchangeable as well. Okay. Um, so you're gonna have to learn these over time, just the words that the repertory that the repertory uses that may be outdated or antiquated, or just synonyms that are used in the repertory that the patient didn't actually say. Okay. So the patient has walking. This is through their case. And, and again, if if a patient I've got another patient as an example who she spends her whole day avoiding sitting because sitting aggravates her symptom. So we could put the word sitting in, and I know it's a particular part of the body, and I can search that, okay? So uh, this patient does a lot of walking, and so I want to see what rubrics come up around that. And I've also, what I've done before I'm doing this is I've asked about, well, what does the walking do for you? And for this person, it keeps them out of the house, okay? So walking, and there are some, uh, don't ask me why it's done, but there are some hand gestures, like wringing of the hands. It's actually in the mind chapter. And there's also some rubrics under the mind chapter for walking. So we're going to type in mind. These are where all the chapters are. And again, this is extremely important. Go to the, the mind that's spelled on in all caps. Okay. So I'm going to go to mind chapter, all caps. And there aren't any particular symptoms to get better or worse. But I also want to check generals as well. Because generals is um, where you're going to find quite a few walking rubrics as well. So I'll just type in generals and there it's in all caps that's the one i want so now what the rem rubric uh, the program is going to do it's going to go into the mind chapter and pull out all the rubrics with walking and it's going to go into the generals and pull out all the rubrics with the word walking so i need to tell it to do that so i want to look in all repertories so in synthesis, we have 446 entries in Roberts, Herbert Roberts, Sensations As If. That is a good repertory, by the way, uh, for Sensations As If, where people say, well, it's like, again, like my head's going to fly off, or like I'm walking on cotton, or I'm walking on marshmallows. Uh, Roberts uh, did a, spent a lot of his life uh, collecting those uh, sensations that people talked about. So under the mind, you have... Um, Walking in open air, anxiety, walking aggravates, after walking, walking ameliorates, walking rapidly. When we get down to the bottom, so you can, it's going to be in alphabetical order. I'm just scrolling down. That's all I'm doing. People walking behind him, delusions of walking, walking backward. So all the rubrics with the word walking are popping up. Fear of death while walking, interesting rubric. Fear of falling when walking. And then we can go, there's laziness after walking. Sadness, walking in open air ameliorates. And then here under mind, you have walking aggravates, uh, aversion to walking, walks in circles, walks in a circle. Okay, that would be an observation, obviously. Um, walking hither and thither, which is just walking about from here to there. Uh, walking, which does, that is more than good for her. And that's one of the rubrics that I use for this particular patient because to walk 430 miles when you're not unwell, uh, and he's quite unwell, um, is unique. 
because most people when they're not well they don't want to walk so much okay so that's how you would look for the word walking um or if, if it's uh if you're dealing with um labor and delivery okay that, that would be another word where if you type in the word labor the only thing that's going to come up come up in the repertory around labor is uh manual labor okay so the word we have to look up is delivery okay and if i click on that again all i did is just type the word in search in all repertories i went to all repertories clicked on that and now it's going to go into every single repertory and pull out the word for um, the rubrics with the word delivery in it and um this is how you can also learn when you do this and you start clicking these different rubrics, you're going to see a lot of the remedies coming up over and over and over the same remedies because they have an affinity for that particular um, uh, event. So for delivery, anguish during delivery, I can double click on that. And as we can see, aconite, amyl nitrosamine, arnica, belladonna, chamomile. Okay. So anything that has to do with delivery, that's another way to use the search function. Um, if the patient has um, bronchitis and you just want to look up the, the rubric, uh, type in the uh, word bronchitis, it's probably going to mostly going to be turn up in the chest chapter because that's where the bronchioles are. Um, you go to all repertories. And so under bronchitis, You've got 121 results, uh, anxiety from accumulation of mucus in the bronchi, fear of coughing in children with bronchial catarrh. Catarrh is the mucus that the, um, the uh, mucosa produce. Okay. So that's another way to search words. Oh, somebody had a question about um, references for miasms and kingdoms um if you go to references not everybody has this you might have to get i think it's the sankran module um or there's a book called sankran schema um which is out there as well but if i type in sa and there's sankran's schema okay this over a little bit and i click on that it is going to open up. There's Sankran schema. Remember the binoculars. Let me go back to that. The binoculars are always going. To, if you if you're in a reference book, the binoculars pretty much take you to the index. All right, it's going to the front of the book. So you're going to find your remedies and your materia medica. If we're over here in the repertory, and I click on the binoculars, it's going to take me to all the different chapters. Okay, but again. Uh, remember from the last uh, uh, webinar we did, this is not the way to go looking through the repertory. Okay, I'm going to close that out. If I want to go to mind, I just start typing in mind, and there it is. I press enter, say anger. I'm just, I'm, all I'm doing is just typing. And once I get to the word, you see this little hand right here is pointing to anger. That's what's going to open up the sub rubrics. I press enter. And then let's just say with himself okay so just a, a little refresher for those that might be brand new to this going up here and pressing mind and then kind of scrolling down to anger that's just not the way to do it uh, luckily this program it's uh, you can use it much more efficiently than that okay matt can you just yep. since you have it right there can you just point out um dr Sarenko was asking where the binoculars are could you just point your arrow to them since you've got it right there yep right here and there so dr Sarenko, that those will show up in any book that you have and yep. then you can just click on it and it will show you the table of contents for for that book and then matt since i've interrupted just another question that came up could you clarify when you did the search of the remedies you did thuja um for example and you change the degrees yeah you mentioned that you know nowadays in present time you wouldn't so much discount using a first or second degree remedy and mm -hmm. for a rubric right. there, could you just explain that further and then if that's the case 
why and when would you limit it to only third and fourth degrees in a search uh, uh, for a remedy? Uh, okay, let me kind of unpack that backwards. Okay. Um, so um, I don't. I only use the search for a remedy in the third and fourth degree if I want to get kind of like a gestalt understanding of the organ affinity, the tissue affinity for that remedy, some of the keynotes for it. If I'm if I'm trying to understand somebody's case, I'm not going to limit uh, my search for a particular remedy because we're going when when we're analyzing a case, we're going from the patient's words, the patient's experience, right, to the rubrics that express exactly what they've said. And then we're creating our clipboard around that information. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, do a search for a remedy when I'm trying to understand a patient's case. I'm only gonna do the grade three and grade four if I'm just trying to understand the the remedy. Um, so, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think I thought that makes perfect sense. I think, yeah. Yeah, and then the other thing about uh, grades one through four, as you can see here, anger with himself. Um, before we had computers, this was an extremely arduous process. You know, I've heard, um, I, 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 I listened to a video of um, um, Andre Sane years ago, uh, and he learned homeopathy, I believe, back in the early 80s. And he said, you know, you need to spend 12 to 15 hours on a case before you give a remedy. And that's, <laughs> we don't have that much time these days, especially with computers. And so if I go to, let's say, mind, uh, fear uh, approached. So this is uh, fear being approached. Okay, and I'm just going to press enter um, by others. Arnica is a grade four. So if I have to work the case out with a book where I'm thumbing through and I'm creating a, a little, you know, a, essentially creating this clipboard right, and I don't have the ability of the computer to do it in seconds, it takes hours and hours and hours, and some people try to look for shortcuts, and so the grading system is kind of like, it helps you to understand which is the main remedy that has fear of others, but it's also helping you to look at these remedies and, and, and um, either confirm or deny these remedies first before I go and I look at some of these, these remedies that are grade one in the same rubric. And the computer, the, the speed of the computer really helps you to kind of get over that hump a lot quicker, so that's why um, if it is a grade three or a grade four, if it fits the case, I'll use it, but I'm not gonna, I, I don't automatically discount plumbum or rhododendron or petroleum or melilotus uh, for fear of being approached. I'm looking at all the remedies because I have the ability to, to analyze it so quickly um, with the computer. So that's why it carries less weight. The grading system carries less weight in the repertorization because of the speed of the computer. That's my understanding. And okay. Matt, do you use much with the search area itself? The search area. So to the left of um, the search icon in the top window, the top menu. Oh, this right here? The, the two buttons. Oh, 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 that. Uh, no, I don't. No, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, then um, someone, uh, Rita, was asking about that. Rita, that's something that we can address in a, in a different uh, webinar, a different conversation. Mm hmm Yeah. So uh, hopefully those uh, questions were answered. Um, there were a couple of other things I wanted to do. Um, I have one, one uh, other question if you're up for another. Sure. Yes, please. Um, so Gal is wondering how to do a search in an either or function. So maybe searching for cancer or tumor. Um, mm -hmm. And then also how to create a list of synonyms in the search, in the search function. Oh, okay. So yeah, well, the computer actually kind of does that for you. Um, so if you look up the word, um, so there are some remedies that are very sensitive to uh, riding in a car. So if I type in the word riding and I press enter, you notice in the same way that the remedy under the remedy um, uh, bar over here, if I type in the remedy, let's just say heap our self, and I press enter, that circle went from light blue to dark blue, so now it's active. You can do the same thing with words, and then I can click on that. And then you see it says available dictionary roots, branches, 
ridden. So it's already looking for ridden, ride, rider, ride. So it's when you type in a word, it's already looking for the synonyms of that word. So you don't really have to worry about that. Okay. Um, let's see. We talked about remedies and then changing the parameters. Um, let's do another example, okay? Let's say um, you want to study uh, Arnica. So we're going to type in A-R-N, and you get a couple of different Arna, Arnica XYZ. Just, just so you know, anytime you see an XYZ after the, wor the, the remedy, it usually means either part of the plant is not known or this species is not known. You're gonna see that a lot of it with, uh, with cannabis. You'll see cannabis XYZ because they didn't, they don't know if indica or sativa was used. Um, and so there are quite a few, if you, so if you ever see the XYZ at the end, it just means either the part of the plant is unknown or uh, the species is unknown. Okay, so we have, we're gonna look at Arnica, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna look at Arnica in relationship to the heart. Okay, so I'm looking at Arnica in relationship to the heart. And I want to see all the grade threes and grade fours. So again, this is light blue. I'm going to press enter, which now makes it dark blue. I'm going to click on that, which opens up this window again. I want to get rid of the first degree and the second degree. We can look at those in the, as, in the heart as well, but this is just for the exercise. So I want to see Arnica Montana for grade three and grade four with a strong indications when it comes to the heart. So I press OK. And now over here under search, I'm gonna type in heart, enter, cardiac, that's a synonym, and let's just put in chest, okay? So I want all, I wanted to search, not for all, if I don't click down here and I leave it at all words in the same paragraph, it's gonna to try to find Arnica in a grade three or grade four with a rubric that has the word heart, cardiac, and chest in it, which it's not gonna find, okay, it doesn't exist. So what I need to do is go, I, I want you to look for Arnica in relationship to the word heart, in relationship to the word cardiac, and in relationship to the word chest. And that's what this does. So I'm gonna click on that. So it's with at least one of these words. So now it's gonna look, at our, look for Arnica in relationship to heart, separately in relationship to cardiac, and separately in relationship to chest and only the grade three and grade fours. So I wanna search in the repertory. Computer's been running slow the last couple of days. So we have 34, you can see a 34 over there, and you can see 34. So Arnica is the only remedy under cardiac anguish during angina pectoris. Okay, it's the only remedy. Respiration asthmatic from fatty degeneration of the heart. It's the only remedy. And then I hope you guys are aware of this rubric. Uh, cough, hold, while uh, must hold the chest with both hands while coughing. Okay. Uh, that's a really strong indication for these top 20 remedies. And Arnica is a grade three. And there's also, just as an aside, there are a bunch of remedies that need to hold the head during each cough. So under angina pectoris, arnica is a three. Um, complaints of the right side of the chest, complaints external of the right side of the chest, contusions of the chest, fatty degeneration of the heart. Scroll down a little bit. Holding the chest with the hands during cough. Pain of the chest, sore. Uh, pain in the region of the heart, sore, uh, mammae, nipples, sore. So again, if you go to the Materia Medica, you lose out on the parlance, the particular how the words are laid out. And when you see this over and over and over again, you start to remember, oh, wait a minute, if I want to look at an issue or a symptom with regard to the breast, it's it's chest mammae complaints with the mammae, you can find it under that, or chest pain here, uh, mammae, nipples, sore. Okay? Swelling of the mammae and children in your chest. So that's that's a way you can look at particular words uh, in relationship to a particular um, remedy, which um, I find useful when I'm studying cases. When I'm working on cases and I've let's say I've whittled the case down to two or three remedies, 
I'll put in those two or three remedies. And let's say the patient has chronic diarrhea, okay? And they have some very unique symptoms around the di diarrhea. Instead of trying to find that exact rubric, um, and I know it's, let's say, three remedies, I'll put those three remedies in here. Um, so I'll have all three remedies in there, and then I'll put in the word diarrhea, and then I'll see if the exact rubric that I'm looking for doesn't come up. Okay, that's another way to do that. Um, here's the exercise I want to tell you guys about where sometimes it's really good to look in both uh, the repertory and the references. So there is a particular remedy that um, they have to lean. So I'm putting in the word lean forward while they have asthma. And they have to be in front of an open window or an open door. Okay. So again, I have to have it on all words in the same paragraph. Otherwise, it's going to look up every single word with uh, every single um, indication for lean, for forward, for asthma, for open. You're going to end up with thousands of useless information because it's too too wide. So, I want to find the rubric or the statement where all of these words are. So, if I go to all open repertories, or excuse me, all repertories. Hmm. nothing comes up okay but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist because here's something else i hope everybody's aware of every single symptom in the materia medica has not been put into a repertor uh, repertorial language or into a repertory so there is information in the materia medica and this is something else that's great about this um, pretty much any computer program you can put words in and look in the materia medica because they maybe the that that particular phrase or that particular thing you're observing hasn't been turned into a rubric yet. So so I went to all repertories and nothing came up. Now I'm going to go to all documents. Okay, so now it's going to go back and look in the repertories where it's going to find nothing, but it's also now going to look into the references. And um, when it does that. going to come up with one remedy. So herring has one indication. And under Materia Medica, Cannabis Sativa, under respiration, herring has, the patient has to stand by an open window, leaning forward with asthma. Okay. So you we couldn't find that in the um, repertory, but it is in the Materia Medica. And so most people don't think of this remedy, Cannabis Sativa, for asthma or respiratory symptoms. It's usually known for its genital urinary symptoms and it's uh, psychological symptoms. Um, so this is another way of just knowing, you know, casting a really wide net and looking uh, can be helpful to help you find the exact uh, remedy that you're looking for. Okay. Um, let's do another example. And Matt, real quick, um, Deanna, uh -huh. doctor, had a question. <clears throat> okay. Right now, when she has a, the simplest rater opus package, which has core synthesis, okay. in, um, that's the only repertory that's in there. And she was wondering what were, you know, if she were to get some other books or what would be the books that you would recommend, you know, focusing on um, for the repertorizations that you, that you do? So for, for, the, for the repertory, okay, so if we're going to go to repertory. I like uh, Boninghausen's repertory. Give it a second to open up. I like his rep. You see, we were talking about how um, some doctors will make a lot of remedies, grade threes and fours. Uh, Boninghausen, as you can see, anacardium is a grade four. He used a lot of grade fours. <laughs> um, so um, I like Boninghausen. Um, I also like, as far as uh, uh, repertories go, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. Fatak, concise repertory is good. 
the vast majority of most of this information is repeated over the years in the different repertories and it's built upon. But each, each doctor kind of had their own little way of looking at and case taking and analyzing and how they uh, recorded information. So they're all going to have like just a little bit, uh, some different information in each one. So Boger, Boninghausen, Patak, um, uh, and then synthesis. I also like Rob, Robin Murphy's because he uses uh, more modern clinical terms that you're not going to find in the older repertories. So um, it's, it would be good probably to have Murphy on that as well. Um, and as you can see, it has in uh, German. I don't know why I did that because I got rid of the languages. I just wanted it in English. I can take care of that later. Um, so those are some of the repertories that I like. But synthesis is a really good place to start. It's really, really solid. It's got a lot of, if we go to, so remember, this is my tab that's open. This triangle right here lets me know I've got Boninghausen's repertory open and synthesis. So I highlight synthesis, I click on that, and it brings me back. Um, there's a lot of repetition in the synth synthesis. Just means they've synthesized this repertory out of other people's repertories. Mainly, who they put in here, as you can see, there's that dark gray. It's Kent. They've got a lot of rubrics in here from Patak. They've got the uh Ner which is really good. They've got um, Jan Schulten, uh, Misha Norland, um, Andre Sane, Bulger. So when you have synthesis, you're, they, they've pulled a lot of rubrics out of a lot of different repertories from a lot of different practitioners and put them into one um, pretty comprehensive book. But again, it, I don't know the exact percentage. Um, maybe they pulled out 80% or 90% of the information from these other resources, but there's always a small percentage of um, information that'll be in those books that they have, that has not been translated over yet. Okay. Um, let's see. So the other exercise I wanted to do with you guys, oh, finding single uh, remedy rubrics. Okay. This is another way that I use to study the Materia Medica. So you do want to know uh, the rubrics where the remedies are grade three and grade four. There's a strong indication. It'll, like if you did Arnica and Chamomile, um, you would get a lot of rubrics where they're afraid to be approached. There's anger. They don't want to be touched. They want to be left alone. Um, but sometimes the single remedy rubrics uh, are extremely useful as well. And... Um, Let's just go with the remedy um, Apocyanum, Cannabinum. And again, I want to look at the single remedy rubrics, and we're just going through an exercise. Uh, it's light blue, so I can't do anything with it. It's not active, so I press Enter. Now it's dark blue. So I click on that icon, and I want all of the rubrics, grade 1, 2, 3, and 4, that have exactly one remedy. So just the Apocyanum rubrics. I'm going to press OK. And then again, I go to the search. I want it to search in all repertories. <clears throat> and so we see there are 45 uh, rubrics. Um, vertigo stretching aggravates. That's pretty interesting. This is where you're going to find some of the uniqueness um, about the remedy. Um, so looking at the grade threes and grade fours are useful, but then finding these really small, weird symptoms um, like hydrocephalus accompanied by blindness. You know, it's the only remedy that has that. So I, I like to double click on that to get me to the rubric. And I see PTK, so that's Patak, very reputable. So he's cured hydrocephalus with blindness with the remedy Apocynum, which Apocynum is one of the main remedies for um, edema. So whether it's hydrocephalus or pericarditis. Um, so that's another way that I like to study the Materia Medica. Uh, ringing in the noise, uh, excuse me, ringing in the ears. Um, stool after aggravates, another weird symptom. Um, and again, when you do these searches, and, and, and here's the other thing, you guys. Um, I can't do this work for you. Like, you really have to be curious. and um, I went through the same thing. I remember years and years and years ago, I remember having my uh, radar, not this version, but a much earlier version in front of me. 
and feeling a sense of frustration because I couldn't find what I was looking for. And that's what this, you know, the essence of this um, the webinar is about. Uh, and the previous one we did is to kind of give you guys a handle, uh, like a stepping, like a, like a, just a little foothold, so you can really start to explore the repertory and and, and develop your own skill uh, in finding uh, or utilizing the repertory. Okay, so single remedy rubrics are, are something that I use when um, uh, when I'm studying materia medica, when I'm, I want to know more about a remedy. Okay, um, let's do another uh, one more exercise. Matt, uh, Matt, yep. could yep. you could you clear the search and do that same one that you just did on the episinum? Sure. Yep. Okay. So I just press X. So now there are no remedies, and I just type in APO. And there, see, sometimes you see how it's uh, not coming up yet. I type in C. Sometimes with some of the remedies, you have to put a little a dot. To put the uh, little period and then the remedy will come up okay so i'm going to click on that and now that remedy is loaded in there again it's like this little icon is light blue it's not active i need to activate it and i do that by <laughs> pressing, pressing enter and now when i run my mouse over it it's active so i click on that i want to see all of the rubrics that are grade one through four but they only have this only this one remedy in it so I click on rubrics containing, and we follow this line over to exactly, or we can do less than or equal to, or exactly, it probably doesn't matter. Exactly one remedy, and I press OK. And now I need to get the search function to do that. I press, I go search in all repertories, I come down in all repertories. So now even whether the repertory is opened or closed, it's gonna give me over here um, on the left side, the entries, like Boraki has four rubrics. I can click on Boraki. And he has stomach indigestion, dyspepsia, cause Bright's disease. Aposinum is the only remedy. Stomach nausea with drowsiness, aposinum. Okay. Dropsy from abuse of quinine, aposinum. That's what clinically that's what he found. That's where he found the remedy useful. Um, Murphy has his 60 rubrics. Okay. You're gonna see a lot of edema. In, uh, in aposinum, it'll come up quite a bit. He puts in their clinical hydrocephalus brain with loss of vision. Um, he puts himself as the author, which he is not, because we saw Fatak was the actual author. Um, so clinical vision, and then MP is uh, Robin Murphy. But um, okay, so that's how that's how I did that. And now, because I opened those repertories over here. If I go to this tab where my, where my um, uh, repertories are, if I click on this drop down menu, now it's telling me I've got Boninghausen, Murphy, and Synthesis open. Okay. And I can click on Fatak, I can click on Roberts, and they're all going to be um, available for me to peruse and look at through here. If I want to switch back, I can just go down here to Synthesis and click on that. And now I'm back in the Synthesis repertory. Okay. So I, I hope that helped. Um, let's find all the rubrics with at least 10 remedies or less. And we're going to look at nitric acid, where nitric acid is a grade three or higher. Okay, so I just type in NIT hyphen AC, and there's my nitric acid. Again, the icon is not active, so I have to press enter. Now it's active. And I want to I want to get rid of the grade two. And get rid of the grade one. So now it's going to look for nitric acid where it's red and bold or red, bold, and underlined. Okay. But I want to limit the search to just 10 remedies or less. So I want to go to rubrics containing less than or equal to 10 remedies. Okay. So there are your parameters there. I press OK. And now I want to search in, um, let's just do all open repertories. So we'll stay in synthesis. There are 112 um, results. So nitric acid is a grade three. So there are nitric acid is the one, plus there are two other remedies, and it gives you that calc carb and ignatia are the two other remedies. So there are three remedies total for anguish from losing a friend. Okay. 
anxiety from night watching. We tend to think of uh, the remedy cocculus uh, indicus for that, but nitric acid is the one remedy here, and the other six remedy or uh, other six remedies are aurum, carcinosin, causticum, coccus, uh, cocculus, cuprum, and nux vomica. So nitric acid is actually strong uh, has a stronger indication for anxiety from night watching than cocculus. Um, despair bordering on rage with cursing and imprecations. Nitric acid is the only remedy. Fear of cholera. Okay. So that's just another way to search. I, I put that in there just so you got, we got a little more um, uh, experience uh, with the search function. Let's, let me go ahead and show you guys how to do like a, a, a you can extract uh, two remedies or more um, and ch change the parameters around that, okay? So I want to look at, and we'll keep it really simple, uh, Arnica. Okay, so I click on Arnica. I'm going to change the parameters, but as you can see, it's light blue here, so I can't do that yet. I press Enter. And the other one let's take a look at is Chamomile. And I'm picking these two uh, for the simple reason that they're very, very well um, expressed in the repertory, but they're also related. They're both in the Compositae family. So as you can see here, chamomile, it's still uh, light blue, and I need that to be active and dark blue, so I press Enter. So now it is. And so for chamomile, I want to see all the rubrics where it's a grade 3 and a grade 4, okay? But I'm not going to put uh, a rubric restriction. So whether it's one, um, one remedy or 700 remedies, it doesn't matter. So I press OK. So it's now going to look for chamomile with grade 3 and grade 4. I press OK. Arnica, I'm going to do the same thing. It's still it's already there. Uh, grade 3 and grade 4. I press OK. Now what I want is I want to look at the rubrics where they share the same rubric. Okay, so I go to remedies, and it already has it. Symptoms with all of these remedies. If I go here to symptoms with at least, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all the Arnica rubrics that are grade 3 and grade 4, and all the chamomile rubrics that are grade 3 and grade 4, but I don't want that. I want to see where they show up in the same rubrics. This is actually how Sankran developed his sensation method. He took these large remedies like Arnica and chamomile, uh, like Gelsemium, Ignatia, and Nux that are all in the same family, and he did this extraction of these remedies to see where where were the threads of commonality, where did they seem to show up, and that's kind of how he developed the uh, the sensation method. So we're going to do a search. And we see here there are 23 results, and this would be bigger if we put in if we added in the grade twos and the grade ones. Okay, so we have uh, fear of being touched. And we know that arnica and chamomile have that feeling. Why? Because the compositae family that the, these plants are in, they have a feeling as though they've been injured, they've been scalded, they've been bruised, they've been wounded, and that pain, that that wound or that bruise, that injury, is so intense that even the possibility of somebody approaching them to touch them is going to make them react violently. They don't want you to exacerbate the pain that they're feeling. So that's why Arnica and chamomile and the other remedies, quite frankly, is, um, Cena and um, uh, uh, Bellis P, um, uh, Yarrow, which is a um, melilotus, um, no, millifolium, excuse me. Um, they're all in there uh, with this feeling of being, uh, fear being approached. Uh, because they don't want to be touched. Um, irritability sends the doctor away, says he's not sick. Okay. Why do they do that? Because they don't want to be bothered. <clears throat> Aversion to being touched. Swelling of the cheeks one side. So that's one way you can look at two remedies and kind of compare. Um, and you can do that with pretty much any remedy you'd like. Um, let's look at how to... Are there any questions or should I? can I go on to how to search... A, um, a reference. There are no questions at the moment. Okay, great. All right. So, um, oh, there is. Um, Patty's wondering: Is there a limit on the number of remedies to compare? Not that I know of. I don't. Not that I know of. But the more remedies you add in, the smaller and smaller it's going to get, and then at some point, it's not going to be very useful. I actually, um, again, this. Using the search function this way is really one of the one of the ways that I would um, use to understand the remedy, not necessarily solve a case. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you're trying to solve a case, it's the patient's, uh, their words and their experience and their expression and the modalities and the concomitants about their case that are going to bring you to the remedy. We're not trying to fit the remedy. We're not trying to fit the patient to the remedy. We're trying to fit the remedy to the patient based on the uniqueness of their case. Okay. Um, so let's say we want to do a search. The patient tells you that they have this, um, during delivery, they've got a, a sharp cutting pain in the umbilical region. Okay. So I know <clears throat> that one of the best books to look at uh, for labor and delivery is this one. W.A. Yingling's Accoucher's Emergency Manual. Okay. And so I have that book open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the words. Um, the patient said that they have a cutting pain. And it's um, around the umbilicus or umbilical. Okay. And is that all I wanted to search? Cutting pains around the umbilicus during delivery. And Matt, I just yeah. I just want to cut in for a second. Um, for those, there have been a couple of questions um, okay. that have been asked on the Q and A, to which I've responded to. So for okay. those of you, for every single person who's asked a question. Um, I've already answered your question. It's under the answered tab. So just simply click on the Q and A, go to answered and you'll see your question and answer right in there. Um, cause some people, you might not be seeing the message, but I have responded and, and just open up the Q and A, click on answered and you'll see my response to your question in there. Okay, great. Um, so <clears throat> excuse me. So we want to look up cutting pain, umbilical, okay? And I know that uh, Akushere's emergency manual um, has to do with labor and delivery. Akushere is a, a male midwife. So that's what this book is all about. Um, so I want to look in that book for cutting pains uh, around the umbilicus. So I put in the word cutting. I have, so I have, cutting is, is the sensation, and the umbilicus is the location, okay? And I know it's during delivery, and I'll show you guys how to look this up. Uh, in the repertory as well. So now I wanna, I wanna make sure it's looking at both. It is all words in the same paragraph. And I go to search, and I wanna search in all open references, because uh, that uh, Kusher's emergency manual is a reference, and it's open. So I wanna look in there, and I might have one or two other references open, uh, and it'll look in there as well, but that's the one I wanna look in. And you can do this with any book, as you just have to open it up. And so here we have, uh, under William Yingling's Accoucheres of Emergency Manual, you have Ipecac, cutting pains about the umbilicus, cutting pains about the umbilicus going from left to right, passing off into the womb. So it goes left to right, and then it, the pain shoots, the cutting pain shoots down into the womb. Okay, so now I have cutting pain, umbilical, okay, but I want to look in the repertories and see what's there. And we'll watch, the, we're going to run into a little bit of a, of a little, um, difficulty here. So I'm going to go into all open repertories and it's going to look for the word cutting and umbilical. And you're going to see 69, well that's Murphy, let's go to synthesis. 62 rubrics, pain extending umbilical cutting pain. This isn't what I was looking for. I was looking for cutting pain during delivery. So what I do is I type in the word delivery. Okay. Remember, not labor. Labor is for manual labor. So now it's going to look up cutting pain in the umbilical region during delivery. So you have um, the event of delivery, you have the sensation of cutting, and you have the location of umbilical. And now we're going to all repertories, or all open repertories. And under synthesis, abdominal pain in the umbilical region, delivery during cutting pain. Do you see how the verbiage is laid out? It, you, it's really, really hard to remember all this. The abdomen pain, umbilicus. What if, what if it's abdomen pain delivery during? This is where a lot of the frustration will come up if you're trying to do a search, just trying to go through the repertory without using the search function. So this will save you a lot of grief, okay? 
We can double click on this. And there we have, we have Ipecac by Kent and Nux Vomica, Kent. So what's interesting about this is both of these remedies, Ipecac and Nux, they're both in the typhoid miasm. And the typhoid miasm uh, has to do with crisis and urgency. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a coincidence that these two remedies um, are given uh, for labor and delivery. Okay, so those would be the two remedies that are in there. Um, let me show you guys. Somebody, oh, somebody had asked about um, Sankaran schema, they asked about miasms. Like, how do I learn more about miasms? A couple places to look. One is Roger Morrison and Nancy Herrick, about two years ago, came out with a book called The Ten Miasms of the New Millennium. Essentially, Sankaran has added about five more miasms. If Sankaran and his, and his group uh, over in, uh, in uh, Bombay, they've added five more miasms. You know, originally we had Sora, Psychotic, and Syphilis. And then <clears throat> through the 50s, 60s, 70s, they added uh, the tubercular miasm and the cancer miasm. And now we have uh, several more, okay? So if you have synthesis or Sankaran schema in your computer program, this is where you access it. If you don't, you can actually buy the book itself online. Um, and this book gives you an overview of the, um, all the miasms, all 10 miasms, uh, and the kingdoms as well, okay? So again, anytime you want to start to navigate uh, a book, you go to the binoculars and, oh, look, there's miasms. I click on miasm, there are your miasms. Acute, cancer, leprosy, malarial, sora, ringworm. You're like, hmm, I want to read up on the typhoid miasm because I just saw them come up in Ipecac and in Noxvomica. So you click on that and they have keywords, the remedies and the summary. Uh, I just go to, down here I just press on go to, here are the keywords for the typhoid miasm. This is what the patient perceives about their case. There's a crisis. It's intense. Something needs to be done. They feel as though they're kind of sinking uh, into despair or sinking into their disease. So in response to that, they have to put up an intense short effort. It's not fully acute like the acute miasm, but it's subacute. There's an emer there's urgency. One of the um, examples I like to give is if, you know, you're sitting in a building and, um, you know, God forbid, a car bomb were to go off outside. Um, you don't have any time to react to that. You either you make it or you don't. And that would that's the acuteness of the acute miasm. The typhoid miasm would be you're sitting in that same building and there's an earthquake. Or all of a sudden the fire alarms go off. It's urgent and you, you have time to act, but you have to act urgently and quickly. Something needs to get done. And so that's the feeling of the typhoid miasm. Okay. And then they give you a summary on that. Like the bed sinking, losing position of comfort. And then you go down, it gives you the su successful reaction and the failed reaction to the, um, the miasm. It gives you, it's a childlike state, self-centered um, remedy examples. And then they give you the, you know, Nux is in there. There's Rust Tox. And if you look down here, H -I, there's Ipecacus down there as well. So that's how I got a really good handle on all 10 miasms was to study Sankaran's work and Roger Morrison and Nancy Herrick, they've actually added to this and um, they've added, added more remedies in their book as well. Okay. Um, and you can also do the kingdoms uh, in this book as well. See here, kingdom features, click on that. I wanna know what animals are like, click on that. And I go to and there's always going to be a victim aggressor theme in animal cases, especially if you can get the patient down into their delusion and down into the sensation level. Um, well, this is not about that in this uh, webinar, so the information's there. And I have to say, I really struggled with homeopathy until I started to understand homeopathy in the context of all 10 miasms with a clear, succinct understanding. And also, I started to really get a grasp on homeopathy when I understood the remedies in relationship to the different kingdoms, plant, mineral, animal, no sods, imponderables, things like that, okay? Um, what else did I wanna cover? A couple more things. Um, just another one. Let's say you're, you, you have a patient and you notice they have a lot of white spots on the nails, okay? So it's very simple. Um, you just wanna look up white. This is what you're observing white, S-P-O-T-S, 
because this rubric is actually very hard to find. If I go here to synthesis and it's under extremities, I think it's complaints. I always have trouble finding this rubric because the, the wording is so strange. Okay. So anyway, and so now what I do, instead of trying to find the, the rubric because of the strangeness of the verbiage, I just type in white spots. And I know it's under extremities because that's where the nails are. So I go to E X T R E M extremities. All caps. Remember, if you're going to look in a chapter, it has to be the all caps. I click on that. So it's going to look up white spots under extremities. I can put nails in there too. Uh, and then I searched in all repertories. And I have 16 extremities, discoloration, white spots. That's not what we're looking for. There it is. Discoloration, fingernails, white spots. And double click on that. And then it takes you to your rubrics that have white spots on the nails. Okay. Um, let's see. There were some other things I wanted to do. Um, where would you find, uh, here's another one with a synonym, okay? Um, if you have a patient, I had one a week or two, a couple weeks ago, who stammers, stammering, okay? Um, there is, there are several places where there's a, a voice. So if the quality of the voice is changing or they've lost their voice, it's under, here, let me just go here to show you guys. Go to the binoculars, again, say all your chapters. So the change in the quality of the voice the voice is lost from singing, from public speaking. They've strained their voice. It's weak. It's tremulous. It's under larynx and trachea. Okay. That's so the quality of the voice is there. If the patient is talking, it's under mind. So under mind, talking, and then you have all these different sub rubrics with absent persons, talking aggravates, um, Talking ameliorates the complaints. Talking talks of nothing but her cares. Talking about his anxious condition, anxiously about his condition. Talking to himself. Okay. Um, there's also indis indisposed to talk loud. So there's talking there, and then the other place is which is where you're going to find stammering is under mouth speech. And it's not stammering. Oh, excuse me, it is stammering, it's not stuttering. Okay, so that's where you'd find the rubric for stammering. And you see there's a Kunzi dot there, a Kunzi note, which means if the patient exhibits a symptom, the remedy's probably going to be in this. And it's a big rubric, 98 remedies. Um, so uh, that's one other thing you want to be aware of. Um, how about, um, here's another one. Um, the patient tells you in the process of case taking um, that they just can't wear wool. If they wear wool, um, uh, it makes their skin itch. Okay. So a couple places to look. One would be uh, skin. And you can put in itching. And then I just typed in wool. Aggravates. Okay, and I could be happy with that. Or, or you see here, because I have my little blue tab uh, show show the tags. I can double click on uh, generals clothing and tolerance of woolen clothing, um, or I can just do a search function. Okay, if I don't know where to look, I just type in wool, and then I want to do a search in the repertories for wool. There's actually 31 rubrics. Um, delusions of the body is adherent to a woolen bag. Interesting. Vertigo, a sensation of cotton or wool. Stop ear, stop sensation of wool. And then you have here, this is the rubric that we found. Skin itching wool aggravates. There's also skin wool uh, sensitiveness to wool. Skin wool aggravates. Okay. And then just intolerance of woolen clothing, ailments from working with undressed wool, okay? 
So looking up very specific words. Oh, anthracinum, that's quite interesting. It's a homeopathic anthrax. Ailments from working with undressed wool. Um, so this word function here, this uh, looking for the uniqueness of the word or uh, group of words that the patient uses is probably something you should really spend a lot of time on um, to really develop that skill because that's really what you want. You want to stay with the patient. You want the highest degree of fidelity between what the patient is saying and the rubric that you choose to use. This is one of the probably the biggest weaknesses in, in my originally when I was training in, in homeopathy um, years ago was that um, there wasn't this emphasis on taking exactly what the patient said and knowing how to exactly find it. There was this, well, I, I don't want to spend the time looking for that one rubric. Um, so let's just put in, you know, conscientious about trifles because that's what the patient has. So there was a, a real lack of um, fidelity between exactly what the patient said and um, what we were putting in, what we were repertorizing, which was it produced poor results. Um, the other thing is, and I think I may have mentioned this last time, but what makes a really good um, rubric is if it has sensation and if it has a modality, you know, it, whatever the patient's experiencing, there's a modality in the rubric that makes it better or worse and an exact location, you know. As an example, the, the, um, the cutting pain uh, around the umbilicus during delivery. That's a good rubric. All right. Let's do a couple, bit, couple more. Um, here's one. The patient reports that they get clumsy and they drop things uh, right before their menses starts. Okay. So... You have menses, and I promise you, if you put in the word menses, uh, and even if you put it before menses, you're going to end up with several hundred, if not a couple thousand rubrics, because there are so many symptoms that come up uh, that have been recorded over the years with regard to menses. But the patient uh, gets clumsy and drops things. So another synonym for clumsy is awkward. So I'm going to put in the word awkward. Oops, awkward. And then uh, menses, and then before. And we'll do a search for all of those. Mind, awkward. Drops things, menses before. That's the rubric I was looking for. And there's also, this is interesting. So you have also extremities, awkwardness of the hands, menses before. This rubric says that the hands get awkward, whereas this one says that they, the person is awkward and then they drop things. And what's interesting is there are two different remedies. Uh, this one is uh, calc floor. And uh, De Groot put that in there. And then if we go to the other remedy, I believe it's... Um, Lack humanum or lack maternum. Yeah, lack humanum. Awkwardness of the hands before menses. So if they said they actually drop things, I would use um, this rubric here. And you, they, then you, you wouldn't just give the remedy based on that. You'd have to go in. So if I want to study calc floor, I can do a search on it or I can double click. Okay, don't forget that. You want to, you want to, read the Materia Medica, and again, with the click function, um, not all uh, remedies, not all remedies are gonna have, are be, uh, will be in this um, Archibald keynotes, okay? But Calc Floor is strong fear of poverty, fear of financial or emotional want, need for security, and I can kind of read through that, in durations of the tissues, excess doses, vascular tumors, varicose and large veins, uh, grass green discharges, burns from x-rays. So don't forget that you can uh, double click on uh, many, many remedies. It's calc carb, you can obviously, Illumina you can click on, um, Ambergrisia. Okay, uh, a couple of other exercises I wanna do. 
find all the rubrics for APIS that are associated with the pupil. Okay, this is another way um, that I like to study Materia Medica, or I just want to see well, what if, what if what rubrics have been recorded for this particular substance uh, with to, with this particular uh, tissue or body part. Okay, so. And APIS has some really weird uh, symptoms for the pupils. So I type in the word pupil under the search, and then I go to remedies and I type in APIS. Oops, two eyes. APIS mellifica. I've also heard it called mellifera. Okay, so it's gonna look up APIS in relationship to the pupils. I search in all repertories. And we see here discoloration, the background of the pupil is smoky, and apis is a grade three. And then there's another weird symptom. The pupils are dilated horizontally. So they kind of like flatten out, almost like a, like a, you know, sheep, the ungulate sheep and goats have their pupils, they're not, they don't have circular pupils. So apis has this pupils dilated horizontally. Very strange. So something unique like that, you see that, you read it, it's in the back of your head, and uh, back of your mind and if uh, it ever comes up you say I know I saw that somewhere and then you can use the search function to find it um, do a couple more oh so <clears throat> let's say the patient has a uh, you know they're, they're telling you my mouth is so dry it's just I my mouth I just can't drink enough water my mouth is just so dry I don't know and it you know my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth I have to Kind of pull my tongue down to get it off of the roof of the mouth. So you can go into mouth and you can spend, you know, minutes, if not hours, looking for it. Or you can just put in, um, you can put in a couple of words. What I would do is I would put in, um, so I want to look up the word dryness. And another word for sticks to the roof of the mouth is adhered. Adhered. And I want to look up, uh, well, I put in the word tongue. It's going to, there'll be thousands of rubrics. But dryness of the mouth and adhered, I want to look at those rubrics separately because the patient says that the tongue sticks to the roof of the mouth and that uh, it's very, very dry. So then I just look under mouth. So I'm looking in the mouth chapter for these two words. And you can do the same thing with remedies as well. You can look at the mouth chapter and put in uh, nux vomica, syphilinum, rust tox and look up all the uh, rubrics that are um, in that particular chapter. So I wanna see dryness and adhered in the mouth chapter. So I look at all repertories. And this is a really good way to um, to search and to develop your understanding is to go to a chapter, like if the patient says something about their eye, or they say something about their vision, or they say something about their throat, uh, or they say something about their chest, they give you a specific symptom and you just go to that chapter, okay? If it's in the chest, go to the chest and they say, you know, it's a it's just sharp stitching pain when I breathe in. So you just go to uh, chest and then inspiration and pipe, uh, you would put chest over here and then inspiration aggravates. And then you would see that many rubrics will come up because a lot of symptoms come up with regard to breathing in or inspiring. Um, so mouth adheres to the roof of the mouth, tongue. That was the rubric that the patient said. So I look at that. Nux muscata, nutmeg is the main remedy, but bryonia is there, hydrogen, laurel steresis, uh, sulfur sinicula. Okay, and then dryness of the tongue, sticky viscidness of the tongue. Um, discoloration then here's your dryness uh, mouth dryness in the morning dryness in the morning on waking dryness at night these are all your um, in the repertory when anytime there's a symptom whether it's pain dryness uh, salivation headache headache you're gonna have your time modalities usually in the beginning so here you have the morning time and it'll be laid out chronologically you have morning forenoon afternoon evening and then night okay um, and it'll give you all these other sub rubrics. Dryness of the mouth during chill. And again, that would be uh, 
uh, one of the three stages of fever, dryness as if in as if cotton in the mouth. Um, so that's another really good way to explore the repertory, uh, bring it down to a particular chapter, and then put in one or two keywords uh, and see what comes up with that. Uh, I'm aware that we only have like five more minutes. Um, ah, I wanted to go over a couple of other things. Um, Oh, here's a good one. So you want to find all the exciting causes, something that makes somebody sick for a remedy, okay? And so we'll finish up with this one. So let's take the remedy calc phos, calcarium phosphorica. So I'm putting that remedy in there, and I want to know what makes calc phos patients sick, okay? I want to know what, what causes them to have symptoms. So you put in ailments from and be very careful when you use ailments from it really has to be when i experienced this 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 is what happened it can't just be well it made me feel a little depressed or it had an effect on me it really has to have a strong effect on the on the patient okay so calc phos and i put ailments and then i just it's all going to be in the mind chapter pretty much there might be some under generals um So Schroyan has ailments after being abused, after being sexually abused. If I double click here on after being abused, if there's triple Z's, uh, no, uh, Farouk Master. So it's two separate rubrics. You see here has ailments from after being abused. Kuprum has three Z's. That means the original rubric is in a sub rubric down here. And there's Kuprum. And there's the author, the doctor that put that in there. So anytime you see three Z's, that remedy is not, that's not the original rubric. There's a sub rubric underneath it. Um, but because it's so close, you can, you can, um, add that into your clipboard without going to the exact sub rubric. Unless the sub rubric is very, very, very specific and very strong with a strong indication. Uh, the main thing, calcfoss ailments from bad news. They tend to go numb. Their hands, uh, parts of their body will go numb from bad news. Uh, grief, disappointed love mental exertion, sexual excesses, uh, ailments at puberty. Remember, calc is one of the main remedies where they get um, uh, headaches in uh, school children. Okay, so those are your ailments from, if you wanna just, you're studying up on a, you, you wanna look at a remedy and in the patient, there's a strong correlation or there's an exciting cause where something very traumatic happened and from that point they were never well and you're going back and forth between two or three remedies. Let's say you're trying to differentiate between calc phos and uh, let's say calc carb and one other remedy. You want to see which one makes uh, fits best. You can do that as well. Um, so Tim, I think we're kind of we got like two more minutes. If there's any questions, um, take questions. Yeah, I don't have any active questions at the moment. Um, okay. If anyone has any short questions and you want to post them real quick, we'll try to get them in before the end. But uh, otherwise, I think this has been great. I, I hope I hope um, our attendees have been finding this helpful. I know I'm finding it helpful and interesting to, to see some of these other features. And um, oh, uh, great, we're getting some nice feedback. Um, we do have a question. How could we find some remedies for symptoms that are never well since menopause? Oh, uh, never well since menopause? You would just um, type in the word menopause. Um, you, you would, uh, it's probably going to be under generals. So you type in menopause. And then unless you have a very specific symptom, um, you would go into that chapter. Like if... Um, as an example, um, they've had symptoms in the head ever since menopause. You go to head, menopause, and you do a search, and it'll pull up all the rubrics that have to do with um, symptoms of the head after menopause or during menopause. Otherwise, you go to generals, um, menopause, and then you press um, search in the repertory, and uh, that'll pull up the rubrics that you're looking for. And 
there have been a couple of questions about um, will this webinar be available? And yes, it's being recorded and will be available after. Um, and uh, do, 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 do. well, I know we're out of time, so we won't be able to finish the rest of, there are a couple of other questions. We won't have time to get to all of them, mm -hmm. um, but we will be making this video available uh, after, and I'll send an email out on the newsletter with information on how to access this video um, once it's up and ready to go. Okay, great. Yeah, and if you guys, if anybody's really stuck and you can't figure it out, um, feel free to email me. Um, I'll be happy to answer uh, some questions. If, if, it's, if you really can't find the answer, um, it's usually pretty simple. So, but that's, that's, that's what it is. It's like when you know how to do it, it's easy, but if you don't, it can be daunting. Right, so. right, right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time today. Sure. And um, yeah. thank you for this webinar. And, and Matt and I will get brainstorming for what to bring you next. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being in attendance today. And we hope that you found this information helpful. And we're looking forward to bringing more trainings your way. So stay tuned. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I appreciate it. Have a good thank weekend. You, yep. Take care. Thank Take you. Bye-bye.